All right. You ready? <laughs> what am I doing? I'm just sitting back, relaxing, right? In La France Suite at La Belle Esplanade. And I was reading that Stardust versus I don't know, the Terror of Voidstone, whatever that was called. And so I, I've, I've done two readings, but I total of six pages of that. I can't take it anymore, okay? I think it's super boring. Uh, if you want to read it, more power to you. It, it's in a book called uh, Something Strange is Going On Here. And yeah, something strange was going on there, but it was putting me to sleep. So instead, I picked up this book here off the, off the shelf in the lobby. Lost, lost Restaurants of New Orleans. All right, I, I think we can all be interested in this. <laughs> Here's how much I plan ahead. I haven't even opened it yet. Um, I did read this a while ago. And uh, let's see what we got here. It's in Laplace. We don't care about that. All right. Oh, I know about this place. <laughs> That's too long anyway. It's <laughs> Hang on. This is interesting. Watch me, watch me leap through this. Um, actually, this looks pretty interesting, and it happens to be about a place that I'm very fond of. So the book is called Lost Restaurants of New Orleans, and maybe we'll address what's going on here. But the, I just turned to page uh, 55, and Cafe Sabisa. Okay, Sabisa's is in the French Quarter, uh, 1011 Decatur Street. So 1011 Decatur Street. I don't have that memorized. I just read it here. Okay, and it says it was open 1899 to 2005. Since then, it's reopened. In fact, Sabisa's is the third oldest restaurant in the city. Maybe, hold on, maybe we'll, we'll see it. Why, why am I talking about it? Let's see what this is. I can editorialize afterwards, okay? So let's get started. Cafe Sabisa in the French Quarter, uh, 1011 Decatur Street. Cafe Sabisa became a historic restaurant at least twice. It may be again someday, what I tell you. Okay, I know what I'm talking about. I live here, right? So... Through most of the 1800s, the building then, as now, across the street from the French market, housed a chandler selling food and other supplies to the many ships, calling it the busy Mississippi River docks. It's reputed that it also served other needs of the seamen and was a bordello for a good while, hardly the only one in the vicinity. They say this about every freaking building down here, okay? <laughs> it's a bordello. I don't I don't know about you, but that doesn't uh, it doesn't excite me too much. <laughs> Something was a bordello a hundred years ago. All right, anyhow, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go then. I wouldn't go now. Okay, the French Quarter became the de facto Italian quarter uh, in the late 1800s. It's particularly in the French market area. The Sabisa, which is spelled S B I S A, the Sabisa family took over the Chandler store and made it into a restaurant. The customers were waiting. There were many ba bankers, shippers, and other businessmen in the neighborhood. After the main port action moved to other parts of town, Sabisa's declined from a meeting place for busy people from elsewhere in the world to a worn-out joint whose primary customers were long-time regulars. I love a place like that. <laughs> I really do. All right, anyhow, by the 1970s, it was more a bar than anything else, serving the last of a dying clientele. In 1978, Dr. Larry Hill, formerly a partner at the hip Marty's restaurant, Marty's was a nice place too. That, that was, there's another place, closed and then reopened. Um, it's closed now, and, but I digress. So anyhow, formerly a partner at the hip Marty's restaurant, acquired Sabisa's. He performed an inspiring restoration of the building, keeping the oversized exposed wooden beams, but cutting through the second floor to create a mezzanine. This aired out the space considerably. He kept the ancient bar and its mirrors and installed furnishings that made the place look as old as it, as it was. The wood-framed mirrors in the dining room added dimension as well as suggesting the atmosphere of renowned old restaurants such as Antoine's and Galatoire's. But Hill's bigger achievement was in the food at Café Sabisa. Although it will be considered traditional by today's standards, the menu was dramatically and delightfully different from those of other French Creole restaurants around town. That menu included an innovation that soon spread to almost every restaurant in town. Café Sabisa was the first restaurant in the modern age to grill fish over an open fire. Charcoal at that. 
Hill got the idea from Bud's Broiler. That's <laughs> another place I love. A local hamburger chain. I tried to find out where they got the charcoal grill, he said, but they wouldn't tell me. So I finally tracked down a metalworking plant right here in, in the quarter, and they built one for me. It's good thinking. Also, here was a raw bar with not just raw oysters, but mussels and clams on the half shell. You can't find a good clam here. I'll tell you that. I don't, I don't even bother trying anymore. It's all oysters. All oysters all the time. Clams come from up north. That's why. Uh, Maryland-style crab cakes made their first New Orleans appearance at Cafe Sabisa. Beloved home-style Creole dishes that people knew well from home cooking but had never seen in a restaurant were numerous on the menu. The chef who execu executed all this was Jason Clevenger. His mother, Joanne Clevenger, was the owner of the nearby Abbey Bar, and he was familiar with the neighborhood scene. When Joanne opened the upper line, I knew that. I was going to say that. <laughs> you got, you got to know your stuff. This guy, his, his name is uh, Tom Fitzmorris. And, oh, Peggy Scott Laborde did too. These people know their stuff. Okay, they, they've been around forever. Uh, they're, they're historians. They're, they're a level above, above your humble narrator here. All right, they're serious. Uh, they do, do a good job. Uh, institutions in the city, as a matter of fact. And um, no, I, re I really respect them. I like the work they do. Tom Fitzmorris, he has a radio show where he talks about New Orleans. <laughs> he talks about New Orleans restaurants every day uh, around lunchtime. I, I forget what it's called, what station it's on. Um, I, can't, I can't listen to that. But uh, that's, that's New Orleans for you. It all revolves around food. All right, anyhow, let's, let's get back to what I was doing here. When Joanne opened the upper line five years later, Jeffers, Jason went with her as its first chef. The upper line was in the front line of the gourmet Creole bistros that opened right and left uptown in the mid-1990s. Most of them owned an inspirational debt to Cafe Sabisa. Cafe Sabisa became very chic almost immediately after opening. Everybody went there. It was especially popular with the French Quarter's gay and arts community, which made the place a headquarters. That went on for a decade. The caf then Cafe Sabisa declined, probably because there were by then many restaurants copying its playbook. It closed in the early 1990s, but returned shortly after. Charles and Craig Nap Napoli, who owned the Boot Lounge near Tulane, I'll tell you a story about that in a minute, <laughs> the Boot Lounge in Tulane, uh, bought it at an auction. They originally intended to sell the restaurant business and keep the real estate, but they came to like the dynamics of the place and kept it going. However, Cafe Sabisa never regained its hip edge and became a traditional Creole restaurant serving food that bordered on cliché, which wasn't a bad business move in that neighborhood, heavily trafficked as it is by visitors. Cafe Sabisa attempted to reopen after Hurricane Katrina, but none of the several efforts stuck. It's such a fine restaurant property, and it's hard to imagine it won't be back, but at the, as of this writing, it's best in suspended animation. Guess what? I got an update for you. Um, it's not. It's, it's actually gone through two owners. Um, we went there the first time probably about six years ago, and we met the owner. Which it's, not, it's not like we, we went out of our way. He just happened to be there. And so we sat at the bar, we had some kind of rabbit, um, drinks were good, atmosphere was good. Like, it's, like the, the, the description says, there's a balcony that goes around the dining room. We just got a little jazz quartet playing. But the food was excellent. And uh, we went there two, three times and liked it. And then, out of business. Who knows why? I have no idea. Um, and now we got new owners again. And they had it open for about three years, I think. And we, we've we only been once, but you know when we went? We went for Thanksgiving with some friends of ours, and we were so impressed, okay? Um, so Thanksgiving, super busy, wasn't bad, they didn't rush us out or anything, we just we took our time, enjoyed ourselves, the, the food was excellent, a lot of the original recipes, uh, like, like he's saying from, from Jason Clevenger, and um, we had the, the court bouillon, it was some kind of seafood stew. Man, that was good. I still think about it, and it's been a year, so uh, I need to get back to it. We talk about it all the time. We just don't, we don't go to the quarter very often, um, and uh, there's so many restaurants, right? There's, there's 12, over 1,200 restaurants in New Orleans, 
And Melanie and I, we've, we've eaten it over 500 of them because that's, that's our job. Got to be able to, to talk about these things and make recommendations to people. So I really enjoyed uh, reading this, which I, I just thought was much more interesting than Stardust the Super Wizard. And uh, I, th I, think, I think we got a, a go here. I was going to read the, the biography, autobiography of P.T. Barnum, a personal hero of mine. Um, but no, this, this is good. It gives me something to talk about. So that's nice. And um, what about the boot? <laughs> the boot is some college dive over by Tulane University. And I, the only reason I'm laughing, I'm talking about it. Just yesterday I was talking about it with somebody. Um, we, <laughs> we're reading something. We're reading a Lonely Planet guide. You see, a bars, bars recommended uptown the boot. Like, yeah, maybe if you're, you're 20, <laughs> you want to get in underage, go to the boot. I, I don't go to the boot, okay? And maybe, maybe you want to. I don't know. It's up to, it's up to you. Um, I, I know people who have gone, and they've lived to tell the tale. Um, a lot of fights break out there. A bunch, bunch of drunken college kids. Anyhow, that, that's, that's enough of that digression. We're running out of time here. It's getting overly long. So we're in La Belle Esplanade, number one place to stay in New Orleans, number three in the United States, number 17 place to stay on planet Earth, as Eric from the Bike Tour Company likes to say. Um, looking for some place to stay in New Orleans that's off the, the usual tourist radar uh, treadmill there. Here we are. Here we are. Close to the French Quarter, close to City Park, close to all the tourist stuff that you're going to want to see and, and much, much more. All right. Welcome to Real New Orleans. All right. That's all I got today. Actually, it's not. I could go on forever. But that's enough for now. A vulture santé, mes amis. And you know what? People ask me if I'm bald. Do they, even when I, I tell my hey, a vulture santé, mes amis, guess what? I'm not bald. I got a full, full head of luxurious hair. All right. So on that note, you have yourselves a great New Orleans day today, wherever you may happen to find yourself, okay? All right. Ciao.